Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to work on the Tally Ho capstan project and we're working on the main shaft here that's gonna be inside the capstan that the windlass drum will actually rotate on. Uh, we're making a new one because the old one is, quite honestly, it's in really bad shape. It's got really badly pitted for over the years and whatever. Previously, we had gone in and made the measurements on the original one as well as on the bearing surfaces in the cap stand so that we can kind of get a figure out where we need to go, figured out our tapers for the two tapered sockets. I have a drawing uh, that we put together on this. So again, that's all in the previous video, but today's job is to get this thing turned out. I want to go ahead and get this thing made to the print, made to match the original. And uh, that's what we're about to get started on. So let's get in here, get this thing going. So we've got our shaft set up here. We're supporting it on the steady rest. We're also supporting it here with the uh, live center on the end. And we're gonna be working on this section back here. So in the blueprints, uh, if you can see that, we're gonna basically be working on this end down here. So we've got uh, an end that's gonna be threaded. That's inch and three eighths, uh, six threads per inch. We're not gonna thread it right now, but we will turn that down to inch and three eighths. And then we've got this tapered socket uh, that's going to go in that total length. I need to figure out from end uh, in here what that is. Add this together. Uh, so basically, that's two inches plus eight and three quarter, or three eight and three eighths. So that'd be ten and three eighths. So we need to basically turn in, and the large diameter on the taper should be two point five eight zero. I'm going to probably turn that a little bit oversized right now. We'll be coming in and cutting the taper lately. So let's just go to like two point six zero. Uh, on that and we'll cut in the 10 and, and 3 8 inches on here get that turned in and then we'll turn the in for the uh, thread all right i think we are ready to start turning here first thing i want to do is i'm going to come in here and touch off on this uh, end just barely i'm going to call that zero and i'm going to zero out my digital readout because uh, i want to measure in uh, that 10 and 3 8 inches. So 10.375. I'm just going to dial my carriage in. I'm looking up at the digital readout. And we're at approaching 10375 right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a mark on here. That gives me just a visual of where I'm turning down to. All right, we're starting out with three inch diameter here. And again, we're going to, I'm gonna just take it to 2.560 on this diameter. So I'm gonna come in and touch off. We'll take about a hundred thousandths off the diameter. Nope. We're gonna to have to find a amount that we can turn without getting that chatter in it. We have to make some lighter cuts. This is always a problem when you're running with long shafts. Get a little vibration and harmonic going on. Try a different speed here. We got a little vibration in it, but not as bad. Sometimes when you're dealing with uh, vibration in a part, it may seem a little counterintuitive, but if you'll speed things up, sometimes I'll take the vibration out. Your instinct, I think, is often to slow it down, but uh, sometimes speeding it up works good. And uh, I'm gonna, it, it, I hear a little vibration. We're not taking a very, uh, very big cut right now. I may try speeding this thing up another notch. It may even uh, increase my feed rate a little bit 
and see if that doesn't help. It's just, it's just a matter of finding the right combination on this thing. Let's come out and see what that looks like. Yeah, there's a little, little uh, vibration in there. I'm going to take this up to 720 RPMs. And like I said, I'm going to increase my feed rate a little bit. Let's just try this and see what happens. All right, I've come up with a speed and feed that's given me a fairly decent finish. It's not really ideal, but I can live with it. I just want to kind of get a measurement of where we're at. So we're at 923. Two inches, 923. I'll put that in the digital readout. 2.92. Three, so we can kind of keep track of where we're at. Um, I'm going to continue playing with my speeds and feeds and see if I can find something that gives a little bit better finish than that. I can live with that if I have to, but I'm hoping I don't have to. All right, I'm going to continue on. Like I said, we're just going to turn this down to, what was it, 2.600. So we're at 2.600. Uh, nine two three right now so we've got a ways to go and that'll give me some time to play with my speeds and feeds well, i've been playing around we're running at 546 rpms and we're taking uh, uh, 9 thousandths per revolution 9.1 thou per revolution and things have settled down a lot i, I mean it's still not a perfectly smooth finish but I think it's plenty adequate and uh, I've been able to increase my depth of cut up to about 50 thousandths with no problem at all. Part of the problem is is this steel is really really hard and tough. This isn't just your typical mild steel that really just peels off the lathe and uh, with the length of the bar a lot of times you run into harmonics issues but uh, we're getting it done. I'm at 2.7 inches right now on the diameter. Again, I'm going to 2.6. We got another hundred thousandths to take off the total diameter. Uh, this will not be a finished pass. This most of this is going to be a taper. Uh, I'm just kind of roughing it in right now. So we're making good progress. Another couple of passes, I think we'll have this end roughed out, and uh, then we'll work on the other, the small end down here. I am getting a little bit of a stringy chip here. It'd be nice if I could get these chips to break. I've been hoping that I could find a speed and feed that would break the chips as well as uh, give me a good finish, but I haven't been able to find that magic combination yet. And I'm sure that, you know, I could probably talk to uh, an engineer with one of these carbide insert companies and find the perfect insert for this material, but I'm just working with what I've got. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not even sure what insert that is, but it really doesn't matter at this point. We're getting it done. All right, I'm gonna just make a measurement with my my uh, micrometer just to make sure we're reading on size. Again, we're it's not a critical at this point in time. I am kind of pulling the chips out, trying to keep the lathe where I don't get a bird's nest develop over here. But uh, we're getting there. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, we're reading pretty good there. All right, a couple more passes, and I think we'll have this at least roughed in where we want it. All right. Get this cleaned up a little bit. And I want to come in here now and get this shoulder cut on here. We're going to 10.375. So 10.3. Just gonna all right, 
10.375 on the length right there. And that should have our shoulder defined. So now I need to get down here and turn this inch and three eighths um, area that's gonna be threaded two inches deep. All right, with that roughed in, next I need to turn the area down here that's gonna be machined into the thread. That's an inch and three eighths in diameter, and we need to go in two inches on the length, so. Come in here dialed in two inches on my digital readout, which is right there, make a mark, do a 50 thousandths cut again, and we'll machine this down to inch and three eighths. So I'm running into an issue here is that my diameter gets cut down smaller in diameter. My tool won't fit in between the gap between the end and the live center. So we're just gonna change out tools. I've got a different tool here that will kinda point up in there. And this is a problem I run into honestly kinda frequently. So uh, that one will fit up in there with no problem. And let's see. Let's see how this tool cuts on this steel. See if we get a better chip or less uh, just vibration or whatever in there. This has got a little bit larger radius, so maybe maybe it'll work better. I don't know. We'll just try it out. So let's uh, fire it up here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the 50,000 speed like we've been doing and see what we get. actually didn't have the vibration in it. I didn't really like that chip that it was cutting too well. It was kind of a gummy looking chip, but uh, that's actually a better finish than we were getting over here. Another 50,000 some of the diameter. That chip's breaking. That's what I want. That's actually a much nicer finish all the way around. We're gonna probably use this cutter here going forward. All right, we're gonna continue on. All right, one more little thing. On the very end of this, there's a little small amount that's just, uh, not completely cut out, or it goes down to, what is that, 1.13 diameter and a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna make my mark at a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna cut that on down. need to relieve some break some edges and I think we'll have this side done at least for now so we'll come in here and break that corner Put a nice uh, medium angle there and we'll break this corner and while we'll add it Go back here and get this one on the back as well. So we've got this side pretty well turned out like we need it. Um, 
This will be threaded and this is gonna have a taper cut on it. So we'll be coming back and machining this later, but I wanna leave it all a uniform size for right now. So what we need to do now is take all this out. We need to flip the shaft over and we're gonna start working on the other end of it, getting it roughed in as well. Hi guys, we've got the bar turned around now. I've got it chucked up over here with a four jaw chuck that we have gone in and, and um, dialed in with a dialed indicator. So it's running true. We're still running on the center. I do have my steady rest completely, it's just slid down here. It's not actually even touching the shaft right now because I've got to turn this whole distance uh, on this particular cut. So we'll see how that goes. I will also note that I did change the insert out on this cutter that we were using. This is the one that we were having better luck with, but uh, I, was, I wanted to try a different insert. If this one doesn't work as good as the other one, I can always go back to the one that was working pretty good a while ago, but I just want to try, I'm just experimenting, trying to get a good finish on this, uh, on this bar. So let's uh, go in here. We need to cut down all the way to Within a half inch down here, this has a little half inch collar and the diameter needs to be 2.505. So we've got uh, about a half inch to take off of this. And uh, let's see how she cuts. I'm just gonna do um, 50 thousandths again. does not like that. So I'm gonna change this insert back out, put the other one on there that was working better. It may be because I don't have any support in here, but we're gonna just see how it goes. Let me swap that out, I'll be back. Okay, I've got my insert changed back out again. And uh, I think what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna start with 20 thou. That right now is cutting good. I'm just going to kind of play around with this. We were able to take 50 thousandths a while ago with this uh, cutter. My fear is, though, it's such a long piece that we may get some chatter out here in the middle. So um, we'll start with a lighter cut and uh, then see if we can move up to a heavier cut as we go. I did put a fresh edge on that insert while I had it off, so. Uh, we should have a good sharp insert to be working with here. All right, first cut, I mean, I, it sounds pretty good right now. Let me, let me look at the finish here. Well, that's excellent. So um, that insert seems to be the the insert we need to be using. So, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dial in 50 this time. And uh, just try that out, see if that works. turning pretty nice as well. The chips are breaking good. Um, I think I'm gonna put my little shield right here to just kind of keep, keep it from flying back on me. This little uh, plexiglass shield does a really nice job of kind of keeping a chips from flying up in your face so bad. All right, while I got that right there, I want to go ahead and get a measurement down here where I can set my DRO. So we're reading two inches, 947, two inch, 947. Thank you. 
All right, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, turn out that shoulder there. This uh, little piece right here needs to be a half inch thick and we're about 540 thousandths. So I need to take about 40 more thousandths off of that. I'm just gonna zero out my DRO there where I can keep track of how much I'm moving it. About 20 thousandths. Should be 10 more to go. I'm showing about eight. So we'll dial that in. Check that again. Right on the money. All right. So again, this is going to be a where the bottom bearing in the drum is going to rotate on. I'm going to turn the final diameter in a minute. I need to go up four inches from right there. I've got that zeroed. So I'm just going to use my digital readout. One, two, three. Let's see. We're four right there. I'm going to make a mark on here. We've got to turn to there. But before we do, I think what I'm going to do is, even though we've been getting some pretty nice finishes on this, I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, steady rest kind of right down here just to give me a little more support. Um, we were getting some chatter earlier, and that should help take that out. So let me get that set up. All right, we got our steady rest back in here again. And I got a mark on here. We're going down to two and three eighths. So we got about a, a little over an eighth of an inch to turn off in there. All right, we're coming up against this shoulder. I'm just gonna stop it here. And again, this is not a critical measurement, so I'm just gonna pull my cutter off so I don't drag it back down there and get that spiral going down through. So let me figure out where my next stop needs to be. And I can go ahead and tell you that diameter is 2.259 for our uh, top bearing journal. Let me figure out where it needs to go to and we'll start turning that one. So we're getting down to the bottom end of the shaft now. And again, we're going to a final diameter of 2.259. 259. I think I'm just going to take it to 2.3 for right now. Again, leave it a little bit large and uh, we'll come back and turn those bearing surfaces here in a little bit. I put a mark on here. This is how far down I want to turn to again. That's a little bit higher than what the bearing is. I got a little bit of extra on each end just for just for safety sake and whatever. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and touch back off again and we'll take another 50 thou all right so now I need to turn another shoulder on here this will be where the taper starts let me figure out where that's going to be at and I'll bring you guys right back I think we got that shoulder there. 
Now, one more area to turn down here, and that's gonna be the where a, another inch and three eighths nut is gonna go. That needs to be an inch and a quarter deep. So, just verify I'm still at zero here on the end, and I am. I'm gonna go in inch and a quarter. One point two five, which is right there. And that goes to inch and three eighths. back on that shoulder there. All right, I think we got this thing roughed out. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a break. I'm gonna let this thing cool down a little bit and we're gonna come back and we're gonna cut the uh, bearing journals to final size and then we'll set the taper attachment to cut our tapers. All right, so I think we are ready to go ahead and turn these uh, journals here. This is where the, bron where the bronze bushings inside the the drum on the capstan winch rotate on. Now I had measured those previously using bore micrometers and looked up the clearance that is suggested for plain bronze bearings in Machinery's Handbook. And for these size diameters, uh, it, this journal needs to be about three thousandths of an inch smaller than uh, the bore diameter. So we're gonna be turning those down. And again, I've already calculated all that out. We're going to 2.259, uh, which, and right now, let's see where we're at. Should be around two inches, 300 thousandths is what I was shooting for. And yeah, we're at 301, so that's perfectly fine for right now. So I think what I'm going to do I mean, that finish is good, but I'm going to slow down my feed rate just a little bit uh, to get a little bit smoother finish. So let me go over here and change my settings on my feed. And we were at about nine thousandths per revolution, and I bumped it down to about six and a half thousandths per revolution. So that should just give me a little bit smoother finish hopefully without causing any chatter. I, I feel pretty good that we'll be all right. So we're just going to touch off there. And that's reading 301. So I'm going to take about half of that distance. And make a test cut across this. I am getting a little bit different surface finish here, but that's because I've changed my feed rate. Uh, should be a little bit smoother finish, although not quite as slick. But we'll probably polish that with some memory cloth when we get done anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and let that run on down. A good measurement. That is smoother. It's got a little kind of a frosting look on it, but again, we're going to polish that out anyway. I'm not too worried about that. All right, we're at 7585, 285, and that's pretty much what we're reading over here on the readout. Again, going to 259. See where we ended up at. All right, we're 260. So I'm gonna hit that with just a little bit of emery cloth and we should be in good shape. Don't take much. All right. 
right. So now I'm going to go to the larger bearing size. I need to move my steady rest out of the way. We're going to get it cut and uh, basically the same thing we just did. In fact, I'm probably not even going to show it. And I got this bearing dialed in as well. It's reading right on the number as that one. So those look good. The last step here before we do our tapers is I want to just break edges on here so we don't have any sharp corners. So I'm just got a got my 45 degree angle cutter in here. And this one here I'm just gonna very lightly touch, just enough to break that corner. This one here I'm going to take it all the way down so I have a nice lead in to the uh, final diameter there. Alright, we're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to chamfer that back all the way. This one I'm just going to break the edge. This one's going to be cut away anyway, so now we're going to just break this edge as well. Anyway, I'm just going to lightly touch it just so it's not got a sharp edge there while I'm handling it and flipping it around later on. And with that, uh, I think we got our diameters all cut out. The last thing to do here is cut the tapers and the threads. And uh, this video is getting long, so I think we're going to probably cut it off here. Well, our shaft is definitely taking shape. We got pretty much all the dimensions uh, done here. The two bearings, which are the two most critical dimensions on here, at least that we've done so far. Uh, we've got those dead nuts on where they need to be. Uh, what's left to do is we need to cut the tapers down here on both ends and we need to thread the ends and we're going to do the threading last. Uh, this video has already gone way too long, I'm sure, uh, by the time I get through editing it. So uh, I think the taper cutting is going to be, it's going to warrant doing a video on its own anyway, showing how to set up for doing all that anyway. So we'll probably do the tapering and maybe the threading in another episode coming up. Uh, and, but we're getting, we're making good progress on here. We have made an awful lot of chips. A uh, big pile of this uh, rod that we started out with is now in uh, in little pieces uh, all over my shop, uh, in the dust, in the chip pan, on the floor, everywhere else. So I think I'm going to also take a couple of minutes and just kind of clean things up in here because I just can't stand working on a, can't stand walking on chips, and I'm walking on them down here right now. You can probably hear them. I'm underneath my feet, and uh, that drives me crazy. All right, guys, that's a wrap. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. A uh, big, huge thank you to guys who support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal. There's links on how to do that down in the description if you want to help out there. Greatly, greatly appreciated. And a uh, big, huge thank you to all the guys who have already uh, subscribed to the channel as well. If you haven't, do that as well. And with it, we're going to sign off there. We'll catch you in the next video again. Thanks for watching.